Hi everyone and welcome to the channel. Thank you for visiting and thank you for subscribing. If you like what you see here, please share it with a friend. I am here to help you work on creating lifelong love. And for those of you who are in a marriage of 25 years or more or who aspire to be, this is the place for you. I invite you to take a look at my playlists on this channel. You will find many different topics and a lot of content that goes back within the last couple of years. I did a podcast and I think that you might find something that interests you. Today's topic is love is a decision. How many times have we heard that love is a decision and not a feeling? Many of you might have had marriage preparation classes that talk about love being a decision. So let's dig into that a little bit. I'd like to think of marriage in four stages. They can kind of overlap. You fall in love, you rise in love, you develop in love, and you decide to love. Now when you fall in love, there's euphoria, there's feelings, there's heightened excitement, it's new, it's erotic, it's romantic, it, there's this a sexual tension and you just have to be with this person, you fall in love, you get married. Many people will say, oh, after two years, the honeymoon is over and now you have to rise in love. And that may or not be true for all couples. Some people's honeymoons only last two months and they are shocked by something disclosed by their partner that they didn't know before. Maybe the partner had a porn addiction. Maybe the partner has extreme financial debt that they kept hidden or just didn't reveal to you. Maybe they have a parent with extreme health conditions or physical conditions or mental conditions that you didn't meet or didn't know about and now you've taken this on and it can be a shock. So you've fallen in love and then you're like, wow, I did not sign up for this. Well, guess what? You did sign up for this when you got married, when you made a covenant and so now you have to pivot. Now you have to rise in love. And so not everybody will go through the honeymoon is over and, and things change in two years. No, sometimes it's a slow and gradual change and sometimes we have these little realizations or little, little pivots we have to make along the way. So when we rise in love, that's when we are called to start to set aside our selfish feelings. It's not all about us and how we feel. We, we really are working on making the two of us a unit. You didn't really have to put much effort when you fell in love and when you got married, but there, there will come a time where you have to put forth a little more effort. You have to re-examine what it means to sacrifice, what it means to compromise, what it means to do things for someone else that maybe you don't wanna do. So we have to rise in love in our marriage. And then there comes a time where we are developing in love. We are developing in love when, like in your 30s, 40s, 50s, you're, you're in the hard stages of life where you have a mortgage, you have financial commitments and responsibilities. Maybe you have legal issues that you've had to face about something, a property you owned or a business or something with a relative or something um, with, with an estate, I, I don't know, but there are going to be challenges when you are developing in love. Maybe you have a child with, with an illness that takes you by surprise, that needs a lot of time and attention, and you have to shift your priorities. Maybe you had a great career going, but you have somebody within your family that needs you to pay full attention to. So developing in love can be very difficult that I, I think that, well, divorce happens along many different timelines. It, it will happen early on, and believe it or not, there are many divorces happening after the 20, 25 year mark. There can be shocking things that happen. 
but sometimes uh, a person just doesn't decide to be in love with this person. It do doesn't want to do what it takes. And again, I am not downgrading serious conditions in which people divorce, but I do want to say that the decision to love, that's when, when things have been difficult in your relationship. If you, if you focus on love and marriage as a decision and a commitment, not a feeling and a personal individual choice, you will be more successful. And what I'm thinking here is maybe you've had a spouse that has stepped out, that has had a hookup, that has had an affair. Maybe you have had a, a situation where you feel like your spouse is lying to you and covering something up, depression. The decision to love, that's when you have to dig in and things can be very difficult. Have you heard of the nationalmarriageweek.org? In, in the week of February 7th to the 14th, they, uh, this organization has suggested that couples do special things to enliven your marriage. And it's headed up by Sheila Weber, who has said that a covenant marriage, a marriage in which we commit to and which we decide to, is likely to succeed because once we've made that decision, then we work on our happiness. Then we work on doing what it takes. Then we work on the sacrifice. You see, so some people believe if, if I want to be happy and I want to have good feelings about my relationship and if that isn't working out that way, then maybe I should break this off with that person. They are not deciding to love. They are deciding to do what is convenient or what is pleasurable for themselves. And again, I'm not downgrading anybody here who, who has made those decisions, but to, the goal of today's video is to have you think love as a decision, your marriage as a decision, your marriage as a commitment. I hope you have a great day and make your marriage great.